hey everyone welcome to coding simplified and in this video we'll see that what is the IOC principles and what is the DIP principle means so you might have heard these terms uh, many times like IOC principle or the uh, inversion of control principle and the DIP principle or dependency inversion principle right so what are these if you you can see from here as well that this IOC or inversion of control and the DIP they are the principles and uh, the related terms are you also might have heard this like we have the dependency injection which is DI and this is a pattern so we'll also see about the DI in our subsequent videos uh, but for this video we'll talk about what is the IOC principle and what is the DI principle or the dependency inversion principle right and after that we'll also talk about the IOC container so don't be confused why IOC principle and IOC container these are the IOC containers and these are the framework like we have unity container we have couple of more containers as well right so uh, that will also talk about it later uh, but here we are talking about the IOC and DIV principle so the main aim of IOC principle is to achieve the loose coupling by inverting control so uh, loose coupling means like component components should be independent components should not dependent uh, on each other tightly right so our aim is to avoid the tight coupling here by using the IOC principle so from the name itself you could see this is inversion of control means we want to invert the control now here the control is any additional responsibility that a particular class has so let's say if in a particular class we are also creating an object of another class right so that is a control here that is a dependency that we are doing in that particular class and that is something uh, IOC as per the IOC principle it says we want to remove that control we want to remove that additional functionality that we are creating here so let's say if you are creating any object in that particular class so we want to we, we should not create object there rather we should create object in the another class so that is how then we can achieve the loose coupling between different classes or different components so let's see why one of the example so if you see the basic example here we have the employee operation class and in this op employee operation class we does we do the operations related to the employees like let's say get employee name or get number of employees and other operations now whatever operations we do that we use the employee data object right and again internally we are using the employee data so how to get the object of employee data so what it is doing it is creating the object of employee data here right and as per the IOC principle this is not correct because it says that you are because if you see employee operation is dependent on the employee data class and we are creating the object of employee data here so it says that this is a control you are dependent on the employee data until unless you are not creating object of employee data you can't do any operation here right so here is a tight coupling of employee operation and employee data class and that's what it says that the problem here is that let's say there is a, any change in the employee data then you have to basically update in the code let's say if you are changing the name or if you are changing some other ways so again it will impact here because we are creating an object here so it means directly uh, we need to update this code whenever there is a change in employee data class right so that's where it says that we need to invert the control of this right so though we can do multiple improvements here but one of the basic improvement that we need to do that at least we can remove the object creation in this class so earlier when we were creating the employee operation uh, employee data object here rather than that now we are creating an object via the data factory so what we will do we will create another class employee data factory and from where we will get the object so here uh, let's say employee data factory don't get employee data object so now this class is providing the object so the thing is like let's say in future if there is uh, if there if there is some changes in the creation of object then we are not impacted we'll keep on just calling the uh, employee data factory dot get employee data object and it will basically uh, return as the object right now let's see about the DIP principle or which is the dependency inversion principle right so what DIP principle says that high level modules should not depend on low level modules both should depend on the abstraction so if you see here what is the high level module so if you see employee operation is high level module because it is dependent on low level module here which is employee data 
right we can see here that here employee operation is dependent on the employee data object because we are getting the object and that is how it is dependent so what it says that this is not correct high level module should not depend on low level module rather it should depend on abstraction abstraction so what it means it means that here it is dependent on employee data so rather depending on the employee data it should basically depend on the abstraction of the employee data so what we need to do here we can create an interface or an abstract class and then we can return that object right so basically we should create an interface of it so what we can what we can improve here rather returning the employee data because earlier here we were returning the employee data rather we should return the i employee data here right so now what will happen that after that uh, here employee operation so you see like earlier we were creating an earlier we were getting the object of employee data right now rather than employee data now we have updated to i employee data so what's the benefit is the benefit is that now uh, basically uh, so this is i employee data and what is happened here so we have created an interface i employee data we have defined the function here and then employee data is basically uh, implementing the i employee data right so that is how it is implementing the get employee name and now we are returning the object of i employee data and here uh, we are uh, basically it will return the new employee data which is the type of i employee data so what has changed now that when it will get the object it will get the type of i employee data right so earlier when employee operation was dependent on the new employee data rather than this now employee operation is dependent on the i employee data right so that is why we have done here that now high level module is not dependent on the low level module which is employee data rather it is it should depend on the abstraction so abstraction of employee data is i employee data now employee operation is dependent on the abstraction which is i employee data because here now it has now it is getting the object of i employee data basically object is still new employee data uh, but it is referring to i employee data right so that's what we have improved here that rather than returning the employee data we have written the i employee data so now high level module is dependent on the abstraction not the employee data right so that's what the dip principle says so that's what uh, basically we have improved in the uh, we have done improvement as part of the ioc principle and the dip principle now in next session we'll see that what is a dependency injection pattern right so if you see overall all these things are related to the uh, common aim which is to make the components as loose coupled right but in this video we started with the ioc principle as well as the dip principle and next video let's see what is a dependency injection pattern right so in case you have any questions please write in the comment section and please like the video and please subscribe the channel for more such videos thank you